Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Greg, and this is Danny. We have 212 days and $241,703.85 left to build our dream home. In our last video, we dug this trench, formed in the footer, poured the footer full of concrete, and were delayed by winter by quite a ways. In today's video, we will be getting our rough-in plumbing installed. What could go wrong? I just screwed myself on this. I am standing amongst piles of dirt. That is because we are going to have a finished concrete floor. Before we can put that floor in though, we have to put our plumbing in the ground. This page, which shows just the concrete slab detail, I can pinpoint where my toilets are, where the bathtubs and showers are, where the sinks are, the washer, etc. I had to then figure out how I was going to lay out my plumbing. This is a part that you may want to talk to a plumber about, which I did. And I had my own designs. They weren't very good they weren't very efficient i have a good friend who is a very knowledgeable plumber he came over and helped me the first thing we're going to design here is the drainage system we are going to trench out of the earth one main trunk line basically running down the center of the long direction of the home then we will take each tub shower sink washing machine and we're going to trench to that main trunk so those are the branches this is a four inch PVC pipe. We're using this to drain all of our plumbing fixtures. This thing has to have a decline, right? It has to go downhill from the highest point, which is right here. So that all the waste material makes it out of the house instead of stuck under the house. And because it's a four inch pipe, we are allowed either an eighth inch drop over a foot or a quarter inch drop over a foot. Now that's not, doesn't seem like a big difference and it's not if it's just one foot, but it's a huge difference when it's over 77 feet, which is the run that we have. But I could probably start out somewhere about this high. Yeah, it's about six and a half inches down from the top of the stem wall. By the end of the 77 foot run, when it goes out of the house and into our septic system, that end has to be lower than this end by like nine and a half to 19 and a half inches. So I need to start the high side as high as I can so that I have plenty of room to, you know, exit out somewhere in this area on the other side of the house. I've reached the end. <laughs> I broke down and got this level from the hardware store. I don't know, I don't know if it's a plumbing specific level, but it has little marks on here where the bubble will move and it'll show you exactly how much drop you have given your, your you know, your pipe. Then I found where this hole is gonna be by making sure that this last pipe was straight and falling at the right uh, depth. And then I put this level up here, marked where it touches the wall. I'm gonna cut this hole out. If this is a mistake, and I don't think it is, patch it up again with, you know, closed cell spray foam. Okay, I've been having some problems with the kitchen plumbing in. Here's what I've come up with. If we zoom in on the floor plans, you can see that the kitchen island is at an angle. The measurements that I have lead me directly to the center of the sink, which is fine. That is not where I want to have my pipe pop up. I will be storing things under the sink in the cabinetry and to have a pipe sitting right in the middle of everything is quite annoying. I am going to want the drain pipe to be coming up in a corner of the under cabinet. The yellow line here and this other yellow line here, those are the cross section of where the center of my sink will be. This wooden frame here represents the angle of the sink and the size of the cabinet that will be under the sink. Now I've ran these pink lines from corner to corner so that if you look straight over, you can see the centers are in the same spot. Now the incoming drain pipe is going to happen over here and that's going to come up, as you can see, towards the corner of the cabinet. That is a two inch pipe. The drain is a four inch pipe. I'm going to have to convert from two into four. It's easy, we have this. This is a sweeping 90 into the four inch. This will set in this pipe like that and there'll be a two inch pipe going that direction. This is just a nasty, burry, crappy cut. And so now you all get to watch me try to use this tool that I purchased. And I saw 
somebody on Instagram using it. Okay. And now I've enlisted the help of my nephews, Keegan. Hey there. Somewhere around here is Reese and my daughter, Evelyn. Our goal today is to get this thing glued up. going to try plumbing by myself ever again. It's very frustrating and my hat's off to you plumbers out there who are good at this stuff. I am not. I am not. The most frustrating thing about this, when I ask 10 different plumbers how to do this, I get 10 different answers. All of them are correct. And if you have a mind like mine, first of all, my condolences. Secondly, it's very frustrating when you don't have one clear-cut single answer to do something properly, there's like 10 or 15 ways to do this properly, and there's infinite ways to do this improperly. Even with the help of my nephews and my daughter, we only got one bathroom glued up. It's been very frustrating. We passed inspection. That's the good news. Now the bad news. I hated every minute of it. For those of you who don't know, rough in plumbing, are these, these white pipes that you see around me and the one on the ground. These are drains. That big one there, that's a drain for a toilet. This here, this is a vent for a shower. This is all the stuff that gets roughed in before the concrete is poured. And it almost killed me. I asked so many professionals how to do this, how to put it together, what pipes go where, what would pass code, what wouldn't pass code. And for every professional I asked, I got a wildly different solution to my problem. I didn't know how I was going to impress the inspector to get this to pass. But then I had an idea. If I want to impress the inspector, why not just call the inspector? Our local inspection department will come out to your job site and give you free consultations on stuff. And I cannot tell you how much money and time that saved me. Behind me, there's a pressure cap. You could fill it up just like a car tire. And I filled my whole system up after capping off all of the pipe. I actually had my daughter cap off all the pipe. Pumped it up to five PSI, it held. We did all that before the inspector came out to make sure when he came out, he was happy with what he saw, all was good to go. Now, what I'm doing is I'm burying this. This is a three quarter screened gravel that I'm burying this in. The next step will be to get water incoming to the house from our well so that we can have water at the faucets and stuff. And that will be coming in through this one inch pipe that you see right here. That'll be for a later video. Let me point out some highlights here. This is a bathroom setup. There's one over there and there's another over there. I have three bathrooms in this home. This is a shower, this is a toilet, this is a sink. The shower, this upright is a vent. It'll go up into the attic and eventually through the roof somehow. Same with that one. The shower drain, is right here. You know, he'll be sh standing up here on the pad of concrete and the, sh the water will drain through here, through the floor. This is a vent and above the slab somewhere, it will tie into the drain as well for the sink. This is a toilet, just the drain. The toilet will sit on top of, of this pipe once the concrete is poured and you know, walls are up and we're ready for it. Another weird thing is I was told to build this. This is just a three inch sand tee with a three inch pipe glued into it. These two vents are in a wall and I was told to just put this just like that in the wall and that is for radon. I didn't, I'm, apparently this is all we need for radon mitigation. I know there's a lot more that needs to go into it. 
and I'd love to hear the comments, but at the same time, I kind of don't care. But other than that, everything's passed and it can be covered. You can see our plumbing's all covered up and we're moving on to the next phase. As far as plumbing goes though, even if you're pretty handy like I am and you loosely understand plumbing like I do, uh, it really wasn't worth doing it by myself. I should have hired someone to do it for me. What we saved in money doesn't make up for the time we lost. It took us way too long to do this. And in the end, I had to get a lot of help anyways. <laughs> that would be my input. And if you're trying this yourself, don't. Yeah, the finances were kind of complicated for this too, because we had to make a lot of returns. We bought a lot of the wrong parts. But yeah, in the end, what we have left is $236,174.75 left to build our house. And we also have 153 days. If you'll notice in the numbers, we have a lot of our money left, but not a lot of our days left. Yeah, no, we've got to step it up. Next video will be concrete floors. 